we had a group text and um, we kind of, John started it, said we got to do something, but I think we all felt it. The combined forces of Azerbaijan and Turkey attacked the Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh, which we call Artsakh in Armenian. A lot of Armenian Americans around the world were gathered doing what we can to raise funds, to spread the message, to, you know, speak to people of influence so that everyone can speak out and, and call for this injustice to end and, and, you know, and for the war to end so that we can move on. I think I wrote it because there was another song I had written with Scars called Lives and we were raising money for first aid kits for the soldiers who were fighting in Artsakh and they told me that a lot of these soldiers would, a lot of them would die bleeding out and if they had right amount of first aid kits it would prevent a lot of people from dying, you know. And so that's how they kind of came into my head, you know, they, they were on my mind and I wrote a song that gave them respect at the end of the day and, and um, feel like hopefully like a, a morale booster. We're kind of sitting there on that island, this landlocked island, and defending our homeland, right? So we're doing it on, in our way today. And um, what we're hoping is that what happened in 1915 and what's happened so many times in history doesn't repeat itself and that the world acts quickly and is responsive and doesn't just ignore it because it's not a financial gain for them. This is a moral issue. It's a humanitarian issue and it should be broached that way. It's an injustice that we want people to pay attention to and that's why we're doing this and so that they can in turn inform their own government bodies who can respond properly. You know, uh, we're living in a democracy. A lot of people listening to us might be living, will, are probably living in a democracy. And if their voice gets loud, their governments will have to respond. And this is a, like John said, it's an issue, it's a moral issue, it's a humanitarian issue. And it's, this war is being conducted on purpose during COVID. Who attacks a country during COVID? The only information I'm able to get is through people I know over there or through Instagram and Twitter. And that's even messed up because the Azeris and the Turkish uh, uh, government have hired lobbyists. They're, they have uh, uh, social media companies, um, bots. Anytime you throw a hashtag, Artsakh, anything, all these bots start hitting. And that's why a lot of celebrities who got into this and actually wanted to back us, Nas, um, uh, Justin Bieber, I think, Elton John, Cardi B. They, Cardi B, they all pulled back because they were afraid because there were death threats. I get death threats on, in my DMs. And it's insane that they're doing this and it's okay. You try to report them and you get back. I report them, you know what I get back a few times? That doesn't go beyond our um, you know, guidelines. Like that's okay. Between Azerbaijan and Turkey, you're talking about two, you're talking about two dictatorships. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of disinformation and silencing of voices within their own countries. These are not countries where you have the freedoms that we have in, in the Western world and a lot of other places. These are countries where if you don't agree with the government, there are consequences that you're gonna pay for those different thoughts. Of course, Armenia is a modern progressive democracy and Azerbaijan is a petro-oligarchic corrupt dictatorship. So I, part of the reason of the war is for, them, for the Aliyev regime family, I should say, to hang on to their power. Same with Erdogan. That's the difference. We're protecting our lands. We're protecting our culture. We're protecting our nation. These guys are just fighting. Half of them are mercenaries from Syria. Half of them are jihadist uh, ISIS members. This is what we're, it's, it's turning into a holy war. It was never that. First of all, when you're defending your nation, you do it with joy in your heart. And when you're not the aggressor and you know that you're in the right, you fight with more strength. Mm -hmm. And that's why they get their asses kicked every chance they get. And if it isn't for drones in Turkey, they wouldn't stand a chance. I'm born there, I have a lot of family there. Uh, the youngins are all in the front lines. We're sitting there every morning I wake up hoping there's not a text from my mother saying this person's gone. The only time I've been to Armenia is when we played there. But when we were arriving, I could feel the energy of like my grandmother, my grandfather, and like, you know, and, and I felt that and I was like emotional, I was like next to, one of our security people and I was like trying not to show him I was getting emotional, you know? I remember that, I'll never forget that. And, and that was, I had never been there yet. So I don't, I'm not sure having people there or not is a big difference for Armenians that are not there. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. Freedom of speech is not something that is enjoyed by everyone. 
but it is enjoyed here. So part of that responsibility with freedom of speech is getting the truth out there whenever possible. It's, it's kind of like us against the world at this moment because they're not speaking about it and we need to raise awareness. So if you're non-Armenian, you need to speak about it if you believe in it, you know, because it's, it's tough. As System of a Down, this has been an incredible occasion for us to come together and put everything aside and, and you know, and, and speak out for our nation as one, as for Armenian guys.